We can't hear you. Can't hear you. Okay. Well, it would help if I unmuted myself. Adele, thank you so much for, uh, for uh, letting me know that you couldn't hear me. I was muted while I went on live. Guys, this is Thursday Roundtable Mastermind. My name is E.R. Wolf with LFI. I'm going to keep admitting people into the room as they come in. And we want this to be a collaborative conversation. We're going to pick a topic. We're going to talk and discuss that topic. Hopefully that topic is uh, a benefit to everybody on here. Then we'll repost this within the social groups and give everybody a chance to uh, to have a say or have a voice on that topic. So uh, if you noticed earlier, or if you were in the social groups for insiders or for affiliates on uh, LFI, you may have seen my post from earlier this morning, uh, which today's topic is action. And I think um, I wanted to, to talk about action as a topic uh, in general, because I think it's so critical to success in anything that we do. So independent of what you do, what you're working on, what your goals are, where you're focused, the primary component of success in all of that is taking action. And um, I remember I had a mentor one time and the mentor said, you know, here's the result, the vision, the goal that you have. And first and foremost, you have to believe that achieving that is possible. If, if not, you're just dreaming, right? But belief alone will not let you reach your goal. It's a belief plus action that helps you get to where you are going. And so this is really one of those things that I want to uh, bring up as the topic is action. And I think one of the things that we all know is there are actions that we take every single day that are second nature to us. They're subconscious to us. This could be waking up and, and doing our morning routine if it's the same routine every day, uh, brushing our teeth. Again, we almost don't even think about the actions that we're taking. But on the other end of the equation, there are things that we want to get started in doing or a change that we want to make or something new that we're working towards. And one of the things that I often see is that some people get incapacitated to take action, to get started, to move in that new direction. And that's that's the topic for today because I hate to see that. I know that if somebody gets started in taking action, they have a higher probability of reaching that end goal. There's no guarantee that you're gonna reach that end goal or that, that, that you'll, but if you take action and are relentlessly consistent as we always talk about in that action or do a daily action that works towards that, you can achieve it. So with that being said, and with opening the conversation with that, I just want to open this up for anybody um, who wants to contribute just at this early uh, stage. You can feel free to raise your hand using the reactions in Zoom or even use the chat if you have a comment, a question, a tip, or a trick. Obviously, we want to keep this all around our theme of action and getting started taking action. So Ruben, I did see your hand go up briefly there. If you want to go ahead and go first, and then Adele, we'll get to you next, okay? Thank you guys so much. Ruben, go ahead. Yes, uh, yeah, our great uh, great topic action-wise. Uh, this morning, as you know, the market uh, yesterday tanked and even tanked again. Yep. So um, I'm looking at essentially what action can I take now to get my, to get my bearings uh, going? Uh, obviously, uh, income producing activity is one mm -hmm. thing that could help. But by the same token, uh, debt management. So mm -hmm. what I did is I consulted, uh, I have a whole home equity loan basis. Yep. I, I, I contacted that account. Then I went over to my account on what I had and whatever. And I know it's exactly, there's two loans out, one with a higher interest rate than the other. So I told the uh, account manager, I'm gonna be attacking that higher interest rate hard. Yep, so my yep. main focus essentially is debt management, even within this cycle, because to take any additional funds and put it into the market. Now, there really isn't any guarantee. Mm -hmm. It can go down further, but there's one guarantee is that you owe money at a certain uh, interest rate. So that's an, that's the action that I took for that particular uh, goal. Love it, love it. And I think, um, again, one thing that, uh, that I hear a lot, and I think it's true, is any action is better than no action at all right? Any action is better than no action at all. Inactivity or inaction, uh, the world is going to change around us, right? Time is going to happen. And if we don't take action, even if it's the wrong action, 
it's just going to pass us by or opportunity is going to leave, et cetera. Um, Ruben, I commend you on your uh, focus on debt. I think one thing that a lot of people can learn from, from a financial freedom perspective, is you want to eliminate all debt. To be honest, you know, um, uh, I'll, I'll be a, a, a voice for that. Look, I, I have zero debts in my life with the exception of the mortgage. And I'm working on getting that paid off 100% completely. Then I'll be 100% debt free. And now my outflow, when we talk about a financial perspective, inflows and outflows is more manageable because there's no payments, right? It's the living expenses, it's all those other things. So you can make a plan of action, like you were saying, a focus on debt, the markets are in chaos, there's a lot of volatility, but you can control what you can control. And I think that's very powerful. Um, Adele, I know you had your hand up, please uh, go ahead. Yep. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. So this is timely because I've had shuffle, I think on my second month in, and I kept trying to figure out how to get on the webinars. <laughs> so I'm here and I'm like, okay, how can I best use this platform? It was introduced to me by a colleague some time ago. <laughs> and, um, but, but yeah, definitely want to know like how to best use it. And I'm wondering if, do I just go to the YouTube and follow all of those or is there, what I'm specifically trying to find out, I'm not sure if this is the right time to ask, mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to know how I can use it. So I would like to use it to build my digital card, which I've done, but I wanted to edit it, but it ended up making a new card. Mm -hmm. So if you can share with me a link that will show me how to edit a current card, and then um, how to use that card to intake information at an event. So mm -hmm. if I'm at an event, networking event, and I want to intake someone's info, if you can share with me the link to do those th two, th two, two things, those yep. two things, tongue yep. twister. <laughs> but that is the action that I am taking today. Like, hey, finally get clear on how to make this platform work for me. I love so. it. I love it. And you know, as they say as well, and again, we're going to keep this around that theme of action, better late than never. You know what I mean? Better late than never. So I commend you for one, making these calls or making it onto one of these calls and continue to be focused on taking action with the technology that you have at your disposal. Uh, a few things that we're going to go through. Uh, I did post a link in the chat for our week at a glance card, okay? I'll pull it up uh, of what we have shared. This is gonna give you a good resource for direct links to all of the calls that we have going on. So we did sprint planning on Monday. Another thing you're gonna wanna mark down if you can make it 2 p.m. Central Time, Tech Tuesday at two is probably the best resource, um, Adele, of the best resource for how-to tips, tricks, and training on how to use the technology. Because exactly what you're talking about. One, we want you to build a card worth sharing. Doesn't matter what that card or landing page is about, business card, product brochure, lead capture form, et cetera. We want you to build an amazing one. And you'll be in on that call talking with others on how to best build your card. The other thing that you mentioned is intaking or capturing contact information. We can go through that in more depth on a training call like that, but you're going to want to make a note campaigns. Campaigns on your card is what you're going to want to be using, and you're, you're going to want to be using a lead capture form on your campaigns. And if we've got time today, please raise your hand again a little bit later on, and I'll actually jump over into Shuffle, and I'll show you real quick on a card how easy it is to make a campaign. And that way it'll give you a path to follow to take action on immediately. Sound good? Yep, no, th th this is exactly what this is for. Additionally, what I'm gonna do is here's my own digital business card. I'm just gonna take that link and in the chat here, I'm gonna paste that link in the chat. So you have direct access to get a hold of me. And I'd encourage anybody on this call, if you have your digital card available, Throw that in the chat as well, so we can all be a resource as a community to Adele. Uh, additionally, if we jump back over to that week at a glance, you'll see there are other calls going on, Adele. You've got the Tuesday call. Um, obviously, we're on Thursday's roundtable here. All of these have links that go to the Zooms. 
Tomorrow, we'll be doing a Friday with the founders call. And again, all of these, you can launch the Zoom directly into there. And the last thing I want to call out on this week at a glance card is the social groups are all here as well. So the Facebook groups for LFI insiders, for LFI affiliates, for the YouTube channel, all of these will be a resource for you so that you can educate and take action um, as, as well on that. So hopefully that helps. And again, if we have a little bit of time later on, let's jump in and let's take a look at campaigns real quick and how to build a lead capture form. So that way you can start using that immediately to generate prospects and leads. Thanks so much. Of course, of course. And, and, and along those lines of, of taking action, one of the things I posted on social, and I look forward to getting everybody's thoughts on this, whether you're posting it in social later on or contributing to the conversation now, is that thing that Adele mentioned, getting started, getting started, right? I know I have something. I know I want to do something. I've maybe even visualized it or formulated a plan, but it's it's getting started. It's taking that first initial action to start going down the path. Maybe you're new to Shuffle and you started to build your first card, or maybe this is the first call that you're viewing or on. Again, that's a huge win because you're taking action on starting down that path. The next action to take is to remain consistent because with anything that's new, and, and, and I see this all too often, with anything that's new, I mean, your mind goes wild with what am I doing wrong? Um, am I going to fail? Uh, maybe a fear of success. Everything across the board that want to inhibit you from starting off taking that action. Maybe the action itself seems so overwhelming or big. Uh, I, I know um, a, a good example that I've always used for this is starting a business. If you've never started a business, the idea of starting a business can seem daunting right? You've got to go uh, register your business with the Secretary of State. You got to do some stuff to generate an EIN with the IRS. You got to go over to the bank and open up a business checking account. Like all of these steps, uh, in addition to a multitude of other things, maybe meet with an accountant, meet with a lawyer, et cetera. And if you've never done that before, it's overwhelming. But if you've done it once, it starts to become a little bit easier each time that you go down the path of doing it. And some things we do, we are only going to do once, you know, and other things we're going to do repeatedly and ideally on a daily basis. You know, some of the actions and activities I think about that are huge contributors to success in business. And Ruben, you mentioned this revenue generating activities. Think about what you're doing right now and what generates revenue in that path that you're on. If it's at, uh, as an LFI affiliate, You've got to be out there sharing and promoting. That's a revenue generating activity. Like with most businesses, you've got to be out there prospecting to generate new leads. Again, if you're afraid of that, if you have a fear of failure, a fear of success, or you've never done it before, the idea of going out there and talking to people or meeting people or generating new leads can seem overwhelming. So how do you begin to take action. And I want to throw out an idea that I heard about. I have no clue where this came from, probably one of the dozens of books that I've read. Uh, but the idea was breaking that action down to something so simple that you are a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 of confidence level. If I said, Adele, how confident are you that you can build a campaign. You know what I mean? And right now you might say, well, I don't know anything about it. I'm not very confident, all of that type of stuff. You know, if you can break that down and say, well, how confident are you that you can stay on for the remainder of this call and allow me to show you the first step in that? And then you repeat that step. Now that confidence level starts to go up a little bit. You know, Jeff, I know you do tennis. You've been a tennis coach for a long time. I welcome that coaching mind frame because you're always working with people who are learning, growing, and progressing. Um, and, and I think sports is such a great um, um, analogy or, or metaphor for what we're talking about here. And if I wanted to begin to learn how to be a tennis player and I've never picked up a racket, you know, and I, I love the picture you're sharing with the team there and everything like that. that if I not, wanted to that learn was, that, was <laughs> the, the first step might be that Jeff says, hey, we're not going to get on the court and play. You're just going to hold this racket. And you're going to hold it in the correct position. You don't hold it from the, from, from the top. You hold it from the, the bottom. You know what I mean? Look at Jeff's already got it in his hand, showing me what's the best way 
to hold the racket. Again, that's the first step in the full process. So sometimes it's easier to take action when we're confident in baby stepping in the process. When I think about prospecting, if you've never prospected and revenue generating activities, you sort of reverse engineered what you need to do and you realize I've got to prospect like 100 people a day, let's say, very overwhelming, you know what I mean? And my confidence level of getting to 100 people today is like a zero out of 10. If you're anything an eight or less out of 10, the probability of you even taking that action is almost slim to none. Think about this. OK, but if you can break that activity or that action down to something simple to where you say, look. Nine, nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, I know I can do that one thing today and I can do it tomorrow and the next day and the next day. You start taking that initial action and then over time it becomes habitual. It becomes a repetitive thing that you do and you start to add to it or layer on it until eventually you progress from where you are now to doing the full action. And that length of time to progress to there could be short, it could be long, but at the end of the day, it got you from doing no action to taking action. So I'm gonna throw that out, Jeff. I don't know if you have anything to add on there. I know I used uh, you know, the, the tennis example and stuff like that, but uh, feel free to go ahead, anybody. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, last night, that's why I'm a little sunburned. I was, we were outside all day yesterday and, and uh, just we uh, were in the final four of the state. So we had a great day of tennis. But um, I'm, I'm plugging back in and it's exciting to hear you talk about that because one of the things that I know that uh, a lot of people think about is, is numbers. You know, a lot you hear online, oh, how to make seven figures, how to make six figures. But, you know, yeah. when you think about six figures of passive income, so that's I'm working on a platform. That, and I thought, OK, what does that mean breaking down to? Because it's overwhelming for a lot of people and all, of, and, you know, as a side gig on this or whatever or as your main gig. But the bottom line is it's two hundred seventy three bucks a day. Yep. And with leverage. And you talked about this last week, ER, how you talked about your platform and, you know, uh, leveraging the um, levels of compensation where you can leverage a, a team of yep. affiliates working to share um, LFI. And then, and, and then plus your own efforts and, and how it all works together, $273 a day, if, if you build something that's sustainable, that people want to continue to be a part of, that is much easier to digest than $100,000 a year in passive income. For some people, most people, that is never achievable. And so once you do it, then it's like you reverse engineer, just like you talked about. So I'll just hush up and kind of see if anybody else has thoughts on setting those goals monetarily and then you break that down and then i have a thing where i break that 273 down into what does that mean in terms of the platform we're going to be doing yep. the same thing like with lfi what does that mean and you've done that brilliantly many times you know this many direct affiliates this many and, and it really does simplify uh, exactly what you're talking about. So I'm trying to just, you know, jump on the bandwagon that you started. Well, and and I, I love those comments, Jeff, because when you think about it, again, six figures seems overwhelming when you think of it from the big picture to Jeff's point. If you break it down to a, a monthly, a weekly, a daily amount, it seems a, a little bit more reasonable, right? 250 bucks, 275 bucks a day will get you there. I want to take it one step further, Jeff, because I think even if you're not making $275 a day passively right now or through multiple passive streams of income, that might even sound overwhelming to you. Here's the reality, right? They say every single journey, right? Independent of where we're going, every single journey begins with a single step. So in order to get to $275 a day, focus on earning a dollar a day. If that seems overwhelming, focus on earning passively a dollar a week. You're going to earn $52. You know what I mean? Again, it's laughable, right, Adele? It's sort of you get a chuckle behind it because it doesn't seem like much. But when we think about the grand scheme of things, everybody who's earning a passive residual income started initially at ground zero. And what we want to look at when we talk about action and activity is some people hit the ground running. They have no fear, right? They jump in the deep end with both feet. They take immediate action and they don't even think about it. 
And for other people, there's this hesitation. $275 a day, Jeff, that seems overwhelming. Where do I even get started? You know, but then when you break it down further and you say, look, if you made one referral and you make a buck, you're, you're well on your way. You know what I mean? Now you make two referrals and now you're earning two, three bucks, you know, four referral. And you can start, now you add a team member on and you're starting to see how this compounds and how this grows over time. So again, you have to sort of look at it as where can I get started in the initial action to take me down that path? And I need a confidence level of 10 out of 10 so that I can remain consistent with that activity and be willing to look back and adjust as I go along. It's like having a, a, a compass and, and marking your path and then going out and, and course correcting uh, as you go along. And I want to go back to this, uh, this comment that I just made about just taking action, immediate action. And it reminds me of this commercial I saw, and I don't know when I saw it some time ago, and I don't know what it was about, but I'm gonna describe it to you because I think it, it tells the story really well. And it's like, all of these people are standing at a crosswalk at a corner, right next to the crosswalk is a trash can. And next to the trash can on the ground is a piece of crumpled up paper. And everybody's standing around this group like a huddle around this piece of paper sitting there. And they're just, oh, my gosh, I can't believe somebody didn't throw that piece of paper away. Oh, my gosh. How bad is that? Oh, my gosh. The impact that they're having. I can't believe they, they and everybody's sitting there looking at it, discussing it, talking about it, talking about who could have done it, all of this stuff. And somebody just walking down the street walks by, sees the piece of paper sitting on the, the, the floor next to the trash can, picks it up puts it in the trash can and keeps on walking. Doesn't say a word, doesn't do anything else. They just took an action. They saw something that needed to be done and they took the action to get it done and they kept on going on with it. What is the difference between a person who does that and the collective group that sits around talking about the action that needs to take place? Oh, somebody should pick that up and throw it away. Yeah, I can't believe somebody would leave that. I mean, they're just going on and on. And I see that so often today in all walks of our life. You've got a bunch of people out there. They're telling you shoulda, coulda, woulda, or whatever it is, but they don't take any action at all. And I see it here in our business and in businesses all around. And look, the quickest way to failure is no action at all. The quickest way to success is just immediate action, relentless action, and doing action on whatever you can take. And then course correcting as you go along. Like I said, sometimes the wrong action is better than no action at all, because then you can see up oh, that didn't work. Now I'm going to jump over here and do the opposite of that or shift over and do this. And when you start doing that consistently, again, it goes dollar a day, $5 a day, $10 a day, $20 a day. All of a sudden you're at the $275 a day. Ruben, you've got your hand up. Go ahead. And don't forget to unmute. Regarding taking action again and eliminating doubt, I was confronted with a situation where a competitor uh, was a, a competitor, a digital card was exposed to a group. Yep. And I looked at that and I go, wait a minute, you know, uh, what's, what's that all about? Immediately I became defensive. You know how it goes. I go, wait a minute. No, this might be an opportunity for me to gain some insight. So what I did I downloaded the app, okay, got involved in it, whatever, went through all the course. It was a free offer. Obviously, they have an upsell. But all of a sudden, I, I saw the, the significant difference between what we have and yep. what they have. So now in my mind, when I have a discussion with someone, I can, I can show them essentially the difference. So that gave me the confidence to move forward, knowing that I have a better, more effective offer than they have. I love that. And I think, again, I want to go back to that situation, right? And it's happened to all of us. Something pops up. It's against what you're doing. It maybe is competition or something like that. And all of a sudden we want to be defensive or we want to crouch back or we don't want to do anything or we feel like, oh, great, that's it. You know, it's all over now. And, and, and Ruben, I want to commend you because you took the opposite approach, right? You took an action to uh, identify and, and see more details. Uh, do an apples to apples comparison. And, and what that ended up doing you for you in hindsight is empowering you even more to understand those differences. So the next time that that situation arises, you're already empowered to help other people. Like, 
Oh, hey, yeah, I've come across that before. You know, um, uh, great solution went through it. However, it's a little bit different than this. It, it, it maybe doesn't do this or doesn't do this or doesn't do this or doesn't have this. And if you're looking for those things, you're not going to find it over here, but you may find it over here. Again, I feel like, um, you know, th there's something that comes along with an abundance mentality. I think a lot of people have that mentality of scarcity, right? It's all of us against each other. It's a dog eat dog world out there type of thing. And that's not the reality. Like there's so much abundance to go around. If we all buy into the abundance mentality, we can help each other and we don't have to worry. Like I'm not worried that Adele's going to be stealing all my business or anything like that. You know what I mean? In fact, I want to, I want to come alongside her and help her out and her success in a way is, is our success. And, and, and I think a lot of people, they, they don't see that. They see something as more of winners and losers all the time. And if I'm going to win, somebody else must lose. And if they're going to win, that means I'm a loser. And the reality is outside of specific sports, there are plenty of games out there where everybody can be a winner. And business and in life, I think that's one of those things. You know, we can all be winners in this game of uh, affiliate marketing, if that's the path you're on. We can all be winners in this game of entrepreneurship or business ownership, if that's the path that you're on. But you have to be willing to understand the rules of the game, right? Think about it like the game of life. You have to understand the rules. What are you playing? What are the rules you have to play by? How can you make those rules work to your advantage? You know, what do you need to do? If we've all played that, the game of life, you spin it around. You, you, you know, another game was cash flow um, that, that I played. All of those, once you understand those rules, you're now empowered. You've got the knowledge. You've got the skills. You want to have the tools so that you can implement your plan. Outside of that, if you don't take any action at all, you might have the knowledge, you might have the skills, you might have the tools, but you're still just sitting there. So action again is that main component that every single day we need to be thinking, what are we going to take action on right now, right? What's important right now is we talk about what is my method of operation and how can I do it with so much repetition that just like getting ready in the morning, you know, it's second nature to me. It's second nature to me to block out time to follow up with all of my prospects. Or it's second nature to me to periodically follow up with my customers and see how they're doing. All of those play a long-term role in us being able to move forward and progress towards reaching our goals, to generating the, the revenue we're looking for. And ultimately, uh, again, Jeff, to what you were saying, my, my dream for everybody you work, you work on making 275 bucks a day passively, residually, through a combination of different income streams, you know? So with, with that being said, any other questions, thoughts, tips, tricks that are revolving around action? Yeah, Adele, go ahead. Okay, so for me, I noticed that, um, well, one thing you said that stood out is mindset. So if we have that thought like, hey, well... I'm not going to do anything because someone else is already doing it. There's that means no, no one won't ever do anything at all. I always have that concept. Why are there like six or six to 10 fast food places in such a small area? They're not worried about, oh, yeah, well, there's the same. There's a burger joint next door or even the gas stations. You would notice that. You can't drive very far. There's a lot of them in a small cluster. Mm -hmm. So the mindset thing is important. And then I noticed that Rose mentioned that she needs to find a way to, to not be overwhelmed. I'm easily overwhelmed as well. So if I look at, oh yeah, my goals in six months is this, or the things I have to do within that time frame, I probably won't do anything. But I've started to chunk and I would ask myself, what are, what is one thing I can do today that will get me closer to my goal? Of course, I will have my list of what I want to do. But if I can only do three of those things, I'm not gonna, like, I'll be okay. I'll be like, okay, well, what's the three things? What's the priority that's on this list? And I would number them. Hey, well, 
This one is the most important for me to do, then this one, then that one. Now, of course, it would be great if I do the remaining seven, sure. but if I can do my top three, then I'm pretty pleased how my day went. I, I think that's spot on. And I wanna talk about two things that themes that you brought up uh, during your comments there. The, the first theme is uh, that abundance mentality versus that competition thing. Um, especially to your um, your discussion with fast food network or fast food joints or um, gas stations. And I remember when I was in graduate school uh, doing my MBA, we did a, a Harvard case review. And, and uh, I'm going to paraphrase it, but it was something like this. You are getting ready to start a new business and you open up the yellow pages and start flipping through and you realize that there are zero Chinese food restaurants in the town that you're gonna create your business in, and there are 10 pizza places. What do you open? What do you start a business as? As a Chinese food place and have a monopoly or as a pizza place? And again, this is a Harvard case review. They do it in Harvard Business School. And the correct answer, although a lot of us would think, oh, let's have a monopoly on the Chinese food restaurants. The reality is, is the correct answer is to open up a pizza place. Why? Because competition, okay, I want to I, I want to st state this clearly. Competition is validation that a market exists. If nobody's buying Chinese food in that town and you open up a Chinese food restaurant, you're going to go out of business immediately. But if you open up a pizza place and you can gain market share by outselling and outmarketing your competition, there is market opportunity or market share to be had. And so this is why you see fast food places in proximity to, to, this, to each other or gas stations in proximity to each other. Rose, I saw that you have two pizza places on the same block, two Chinese food restaurants on the same block. This is exactly why, guys, is because there's a logic behind that. You know that there's a market that exists and you need to go after that market. I think the other thing, and this is so empowering and everybody should take note of what Adele was talking about here, is having that list of priorities and eating that frog first, right? The most important thing, they say, eat that frog. The, the, the hardest thing, the most difficult thing on your task list or the highest priority thing and mark it off. And to Adele's comments, if you have 10 things to do and you feel overwhelmed about them, circle the three most important things. Or if you need that jump start. Circle the two easiest things and knock those things out so that you can get a quick win. That will start to build the momentum. But if you really want to make progress, identify those three things. And Adele, to your point, if you only accomplish those three things and you don't get the other seven done, guess what? Tomorrow is a new day. You're going to have seven items. You might add three more. And of those new 10 items, what are the top three? I think all too often we get into this perfectionist mindset that we have to do it perfectly. We have to get everything done. We have to do it exactly right all of the time. And the reality is the stats are out on this. If you accomplish 60%, think about that, just a little over half. If you accomplish 60% of what, of what you set out to do every single day, you win the day. If you can do that relentlessly, consistently over time, you will win the week, you will win the month, you will win the quarter, you will win the year, okay? So we need to change our mindset a little bit to go, I have to get everything done perfectly and it's either an all or a nothing. And I see that a lot, right? I wanna do it all, but if I don't do it all, I'm not gonna do anything. It's either on or off, zero or one. No, there's this giant gray area that we should all be operating in, Okay, where we get a little bit more than half done at a minimum, 65%. If you can get to 70%, 80%, awesome. But don't beat yourself up. If you get nine things done on your task list and there's one thing left over, that's a huge win. You know, to Adele's point, if you get three things done on your list, the three most important things, and we talk about the win list, right? What's important right now? We call it the win list. We all have the same amount of time every day. We are all on a level playing field, right? We all have 86,400 seconds in the day to use for ourselves. That's a lot of seconds. You know, we're going to spend some of that time sleeping and doing other things. But 
guys, we all have the same amount of time. It's all level. So how come some people are doing more than others are doing? They're just taking action. So Adele, keep up with that. Do that list thing. We, we call it the win list. You prior prioritize it. What are your top three most important things? And you become laser focused on checking those things off immediately. And then look at the rest of your list. You know, again, I, I like to circle the top three and the two easiest. That way, if I'm feeling like I'm in a funk, I'll attack the two easy ones. And then I know, wow, I'm starting to build momentum. I had a, a mentor once who said, look, you just need a win. Just go underneath the basketball hoop and put, a, put it in the hoop. You're sitting there from the three-point line, not making shots and getting all frustrated. You need to walk up and just put it in the hoop so you know that you're capable of getting the ball in the hoop. Then you can step back a little bit and take another shot and step back a little bit and take another shot. And all of a sudden you'll be in your zone hitting three pointers again. But if you're in that out of your zone mentality and you're just whiffing, set yourself up for success. Take an action that's going to help build momentum. Dane, in, you've got your hand up. Thanks for joining. Go ahead. I just wanted you to repeat that code of uh, uh, competition is proof that that something exists? Is that what you say? So Yeah, let, let me repeat that, Danon. Okay, so again, I was talking about a Harvard business case study, okay? And what it was is that you've got a lot of people doing one thing and nobody doing another. All those people doing one thing is validation. Competition is validation that a market exists. And here's the reality with LFI and Shuffle uh, especially in the uh, digital business card space. Guys, we're seeing more and more competition within the digital card space. You know what that means? That tells us that a market exists, that people wouldn't be entering this market if they didn't believe that they could sell digital business cards. And when we think about the life, life cycle of any business, you've got early adoption, you've got this growth phase, you've got maturation. We are literally transitioning right now in early adopter to the beginning of the growth phase in the digital card space. I know Guy, Guy would say these statistics, and, and, and I know he's not on right now, but I'm going to speak on his behalf. 27 million business cards are created every single day. Think about that, 27 million, 10 billion with a B, 10 billion cards, and these are just the paper cards, are printed every single year. So we know there's a market for business cards. And the reality is, is when we're comparing apples to oranges, old traditional business cards to something like Shuffle, with a digital business card, we know hands down, pound for pound, these things will outperform your physical business card. That 90% of physical business cards get thrown away in the trash and that you've got measurability, open rates, engagement, additional content that you can add to a digital business card. So we're starting to see, especially with aging generations and millennials and Gen Z coming into the workforce, that they're looking for that new way of doing things, of representing themselves, of being green and efficient and having trackability. These are all things they're not getting with traditional business cards. And yet business cards today represent the, the number one marketing tool for most people going into business. You start a new business, what do you need? You need a business card. So that's one area of what Shuffle provides to people, right? Digital business cards. What's the next area? Landing pages. How many people out there, if you don't have an online presence, and we're not talking about digital business card, we're talking about a, a specific landing page about your product, about your service, about your brand, about your offering, whatever it is. If you don't have that digital presence, man, you're missing out. You know how many trillions of dollars in commerce, they call it e-commerce, is happening online every single year? And if you don't have a digital presence or people who you can get in front of online, you're missing out on all of that. And these are your potential customers. So again, a market exists. What tools and what things are you going to use for that market? And if you know that it exists and you know that you have the tools at your disposal, it's on you to take the action to leverage those tools to position yourself within your market. Make sense? Dana, I hope that helps. 
Competition is validation that a market exists. I would personally never enter an industry unless I was creating something entirely new. I would never enter an industry that didn't already have competition in it. Otherwise, you're testing the waters. And if you're a startup person, and again, I'm a little bit of a startup person, Peter Thiel, one of the co-founders of PayPal, a multi-billionaire, he wrote a book called Zero to One. Okay, and then there's a, a second side of that equation that goes from one to N. One to N is where all of commerce is happening right now. People say, oh my gosh, there's the next new thing. What, what doesn't matter. Electric vehicles, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Not a lot of not, not a lot of them in the marketplace. Tesla comes online, says, nope, we're gonna do it, we're gonna make it happen. There were a few others. And now in 2022, 2023, we're seeing every auto company get into electric vehicles. Again, you have those people who start it, go from zero, nothing exists, to one. If that's who you are, awesome. I commend you for starting new things and testing new markets. But if you're like me and you're a, an entrepreneur and you just like making money by coming in and acquiring market share, you go to where markets are. You know what I mean? And right now, there's a massive market online. There's a massive mobile market. You know, the average person is spending four and a half hours a day with their eyeballs glued to this thing. Think about that. Four and a half hours a day. That's almost half as much time that they're supposed to spend sleeping. And that's just continuing to trend up. So if you can get in front of your audience mobily, you now have a competitive advantage. Those are the things that we're talking about. But if you see this stuff, it's one thing to see it, to think about it, to have a vision for it. It's an entirely different thing to take action and let that stuff materialize. You can see an opportunity, but if you don't take the action to execute on that opportunity, that opportunity is going to pass you by. And sometimes that action is just, you know, Adele getting into your application, clicking on a few things, building a form, and having that lead capture form ready so that when you go to events, you can start gathering leads. And once you do it once, you're going to feel empowered to do it over and over and over again. And all we have to do as a community is help you get over that initial hump of doing it the first time. I think that's the getting started gap that a lot of us overlook or don't think about. Especially if you've been doing things for a long time, maybe you're a person who has a team and you're getting new team members. You have to remember what it was like when you first got started. My wife is a runner. I am not a runner. My wife has been running for so long it's easy for her to say, like, I'm going to go out for a three to five mile run. And I sit there and I go, you couldn't pay me to run three to five miles. And the thing is, if she goes back to when she first started, she was in the same boat that I was in. And she didn't go out and run a marathon to start. She's like, I'm going to walk around the block a few times. You know, I'm going to go for a, a half mile run. I'm going to walk over. To, and then all of a sudden it just built upon itself until she had a base or a foundation to run. And then she pushes herself, you know, sometimes she's got a big long run. Whoa, I'm going to really be pushing myself because I've got to run 12 miles today. And I sit there, I'm like, I don't even know how you do that. I love you to death, babe, but you couldn't pay me to do that. You couldn't pay me to run half a mile. You know what I mean? So I think that's one of those things when it comes to taking action is we have to start somewhere and we have to do it in a way where we're super confident about it. You have to be confident in saying 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, I can do this action. If you can say that about every action you want to take, I can say to you that I'm confident that you'll be able to take that action. But if you're looking at your list, Adele, like what you were talking about, and one of those items on your list, you're like, I'm a five out of 10 that I will do this, you know, and it's been sitting on my task list for a while. If you're anything below a nine, you need to break that thing out into something smaller. You know, you need to break that thing out to something smaller. If your vision is to write a book, right? That seems overwhelming. But if your action is to sit down and just write for 30 minutes about anything, I have no doubt that over time, a book would result. So again, think about how we describe that to ourselves. Okay, guys, we've got about 15 minutes left. I want to open this up for any additional questions, comments, tips, tricks, all related to action and maybe getting started or the initial um, start of your action. Anybody? And if not, we're going to jump over into the application and I'm going to take an opportunity to go through that uh, campaign thing. 
Well, I, I want to follow up on what you just said, ER, um, just because I've been sort of schooled in the um, idea or the art of hacking. And, you know, Brunson makes an interesting thing. He says, pioneers are the ones that have the arrows in their back. And not that you don't want to forge something new and fresh, but you okay. need to hack. Um, there's a couple industries that I'm uh, dancing around in right now. I don't avoid those. And, oh, I don't want to see what I dive in. I see how they do their headlines. I see how they do their pricing page. I see how they do everything. And that was one of when, when Brunson started his whole thing, he, he started with potato guns, but then he went into supplements. He didn't create his own. He went in and he said, everybody's selling supplements. It's a mass. It's like the burger market. But he saw who's successful, went in and hacks into ad, you know, Facebook ads or whatever. See who is successful and then just get a slice of it. So I just wrote a headline recently. Um, you know, I, I've been playing around with getting a piece of the pie or getting a slice. And that's all that that we're trying to do in any industry is get a slice of the pie. Yep. You, you know, we're, we're, none of us, I mean, just think about it. Does Apple own tech? Does Microsoft? No, they're all oh, each nice. getting a slice and, you know, and, and that's big corporate, but we're just solopreneurs. Mm -hmm. We don't need a pot. We don't need a piece of the pie. We just, we just need a little sliver or a slice. And so you're hitting my, my buzz thing. Cause I'm writing copy right now about tr uh, trends and, and rising trends and tapping into trends and opportunities that are right in front of us and we just aren't seeing them. Our, our eyes are down. Um, I did this the other day. I'm a camping guy. My eyes were down getting the camper ready to move from point A to point B. And I was just getting ready to leave. And what I did was I looked up. And when I looked up, I realized I missed something. And so I had to kind of take care of uh, closing it up. My point is this, we sometimes get so, you know, we just look at our company, our products, our whatever you guys are into, and, and you forget to set that down and say, who else is doing what I'm doing? Let me go see. And all of a sudden, you're like, you know, I like that they talk about their whatever weight loss shake in this way. They talk about lean muscle and burning fat. I like that terminology. Bring that. They don't own that, you know. And if you're not using that or, again, we can talk about any topic in the world. Don't be afraid of looking. And, again, there was another, like you had mentioned um, the topic came up of another digital card. I went in and I dove in head first and I spent two days hacking the crap out of that thing. And it, it, it fails in a million, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, but it did, but I did try to pull out some of the features about how they describe their inferior product. Yep. And I liked it. So I, I sort of pull out and again, you guys don't be afraid to open your eyes and look because when you study the competition, you dive right into that pool and you just take your piece of that, of that. Uh, I think this is so true, Jeff. And, and I, I think the first thing that I always think about is success leaves clues, everybody. Success leaves clues. Think about this. If I wanted to be the best basketball player or the best boxer or the best tennis player, wouldn't it benefit me to look at the people that I look up to and see how they played the game and what their strategy was? I remember Mike Tyson said he would study and watch film about all of these amazing boxers that came before him and you know what their moves were and how they countered attacks and things like that. You know, if I wanted, again, basketball, I would maybe look at Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, right? Um, LeBron James, all of these top level players and see what they're doing because success leaves clues. They don't just show up on the court and dominate, right? They did all of these other things. They practiced, they lifted, they had a coach, they had a trainer, they had a mentor, like all of these things. They studied the game, they watched film. To Jeff's point in business, independent of what business you're in, there's a good chance there's somebody who's number one in your industry. Look at what they've done. Look at their history, where they got started. If you have an opportunity, reach out to them. I bet you, in most cases, a lot of people aren't reaching out to them because they don't think they're accessible. You know, um, uh, what uh, Tim Ferriss's book, Four Hour Work Week, there's a chapter in there where all he did was reach out to these people that you never thought you could reach out to. 
you know, and he, to show that it was possible, that you could go out and you could talk to these people that you thought were inaccessible and you could get advice and guidance and information from them that would help you out. And, and Jeff, to your point, keeping your eyes open and learning as much as you can. Knowledge is power, everybody. Knowledge is so much power. And if you've never done something before, to look at the people who've gone down that path before you and what they've written, what they've said, how they've spun it, how they positioned it, how they laid it out. Like once you start looking through those lenses, you start to see patterns. And the pattern is the process that achieves the result. And the action is just following that process. So guys, the last 10 minutes, I want to talk about a process that Adele brought up that we want to go through and make sure everybody's aware of. I want to talk about this process of having a campaign. So I've got a construction card here in our demo account, Adele, that I created. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and give a preview of this so everybody can see what's on this card. It's a pretty simple, basic digital business card. Okay. It's got their info, how to get a hold of them, some text and an image. So we're not going over the top here, although we can go over the top. What I want to call out on here, uh, Adele, is as you know, if you've done this on your desktop, you can do this from your mobile phone, but the desktop is where I like to work on my marketing cards and things like that. I can click on those three dots and down here where I would go to edit the card, just below that is a place called campaigns. And if you're going to use lead capture, you need to make campaigns your best friend. And you can make an unlimited number of campaigns for any one card. And I suggest doing that so that you can measure the difference of the actions that you're doing. If you're going to go to a trade show or if you're going to go to a networking event or if you're going to go uh, and market online, you want to measure the difference from all of those actions. No different than what Jeff is saying. Like if I'm marketing on Facebook, if I'm buying uh, pay-per-click ads on, on Google, I want to know what I'm getting the best ROI on so that I can lean in and scale up one and turn off what isn't working. So we're going to open up campaigns here. You can see I've got a lot of campaigns already created. We'll go on ahead and create a new campaign down here at the bottom. And again, this is all on YouTube, Adele. So if you want to come back and watch the last 10 minutes of today's thing, you can always stop, start, replay, and follow along. We're going to give our campaign a name. My new campaign to capture leads, okay? Anything you write here, this is just for your eyes only. It's to inform you of what you're doing. Description. Let's use this at networking events, okay? We can set little notification settings. I always set mine to a daily summary. It'll tell me how many people in the last 24 hours. And I turn off the emails because I'm not an email person. You choose what fits you. The thing I want to call out within the campaign is this section down here that says include lead capture. When you click on this, you're going to have the ability to create a lead capture form tied to this campaign, tied to that card. Okay, we can choose, you can show it on the card. This says show at the bottom, but if you've used the advanced card builder, you can move that campaign form to anywhere on the card, or you can set it as an optional pop-up where the form will pop up first and or make that a mandatory pop-up. It'll pop up and they can't see your card or the information behind it unless they fill out the form. Okay, depending on your use is how you will lay it out. And at any time, you can come back and edit this, change it from mandatory to optional, change it from optional to showing at the bottom, change it back to optional without creating a new campaign. So you want to dial it in so that it performs optimally for you. So in this case, for this example, we'll do an optional pop-up. Okay, we're going to give it a title. Give me your info and you can have mine. Obviously, you'd probably want to phrase this a little bit better uh, based on what you're trying to accomplish. But just for this training, we'll do that. The first field it's going to gather is the first name. Why? When they submit that form, it's going to add it to your shuffle contacts and notify you that you have a new contact. All the other forms you can add. So add more fields is the option right here. We'll click on it. We're going to add a short field. Maybe we want to know their phone. Okay, uh, maybe we want to make that mandatory. Maybe we want to know their email. We'll add that next one in, email. And we'll make that mandatory. 
Maybe we want to know something uh, longer. And again, there are different options. You can play around with this. You're not going to break the technology. So again, getting in there and just playing around is a great way to learn. So we'll do a long text field. Uh, what's your favorite color? You know, And there are other fields you can add. You can add radio boxes where they can make selections. You can add drop down menu with selections. You can add check boxes all of that type of stuff in your form. And then you can set how you get notified when somebody fills this out. Now, one thing as a tip I recommend to anybody who's using campaigns is to do individual summary. Even though up here we set the notification to a daily summary for the views of the campaign, if somebody fills out the form, we want to get an immediate identified like, hey, you've got a new lead so that you can take action on it the moment you get it. If somebody fills out a uh, 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 the form for you at an event, directly after that, that event, you want to be like, hey, uh, you just filled out my form. I want to start the ball rolling with you. Um, you can turn on notifications, push email, et cetera. Again, I turn off email because it's not my cup of tea. This gives you a link. You can post this link in social media groups. You can, pu you can put this QR code wherever you want to put this QR code. Uh, depends on how you want to share this. We're going to copy that link and here you can see what the card looked like before Adele. Now we're going to open up a new tab here and we're gonna paste in that link as if we had posted this in Facebook. And what you'll see is now a little form pops up that they can fill out, okay? If you wanted that on the bottom of the card, again, we could come back in here, we can edit the campaign, we can come down here and instead of being an optional pop-up, we could say show at the bottom. We're gonna hit save. And all I'm going to do is come back to that page we were looking at, and I'm going to refresh it. And you can see now it's not on there. And as we scroll down, it's on the card itself. So you choose the one that's going to work best for your situation. And then you just use campaigns. You're just going to use campaigns to add the form to your card. And a last little tip here I would recommend, if you're going to use a card specifically for lead capture, Build the context of the card with the form in mind. I always think like the easiest thing might be like a video landing page, right? Where it's something like a video of you, the form, and that's it. And then you come on and you're like, hey, this is Adele. I'm so happy that we connected. I want to tell you a little bit about me and what I do and how I can help you. And if you're interested in connecting with me, just go ahead and fill the form out below and I'll look forward to following up with you. You know, and then the form is sitting right there. So don't feel like it just has to be something you tack on to any of your cards. You can build a card with the specific purpose of gathering those leads. And then when you meet people, you know, hey, let, let's connect. I'm going to tap this information to you, or I'm going to have you scan it off my phone, or I'm going to text it to you, et cetera. Airdrop, it doesn't matter. Okay, I, I hope that helps. Again, I know that was a quick training. Um, I would encourage, as I mentioned earlier, uh, take an opportunity to join us on some of the other calls. The benefit here is you have access to an entire community that's focused on helping everybody else be successful. Okay, so we wanna see you be successful. We wanna see you learn this stuff. We wanna see you implement uh, this stuff as well. Okay, guys, we've got one minute left. I'm gonna uh, throw this out. Any last questions, comments, thoughts, tips or tricks, even celebrations from anybody? I just want to say thank you. This was really informative. And yes, I will be on more calls. And um, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for joining much. today. This is why we do what we do. And, and again, we want to make all of this available. Um, in closing, I do want to give a shout out to Ruben. I think he's been doing something uh, that all of us should be doing, which is in the social groups, when Ruben gets a new referral, He's been introducing that person to the social group, inviting them to join and including them in the community. I think what a lot of people overlook, guys, is LFI is a lot more than just the shuffle tool or the tap tool. I believe that those tools are phenomenal and can have a major impact in any business. But LFI is also about creating a community, a community where we collectively get together and we help each other out. 
It's an abundance mentality where the high tide raises all ships where we can get together. And some of us with more knowledge than others can share and impart that knowledge so that we all help each other. And when we all contribute to the community, when we all um, introduce other people, welcome other people, invite people and share information, that community collectively grows together. And you guys might not realize it, but even the person who's getting the help is helping out the person giving it. And it all grows and blossoms together. So with that being said, I wanna thank everybody um, for joining today. I know that time is valuable and I appreciate that you spent a little bit of it on the Thursday with me. Um, last minute housekeeping tomorrow, same time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. We're gonna do the Friday with the Founders Call. So feel free to join on that. We're gonna be talking all things LFI and then we'll be heading into the weekend. So with that being said, everybody, thank you so much. Have an amazing Thursday. Get into action. What is your action going to be? Take action today and be relentlessly consistent with that action.